Summer days, taking a break and relaxing becomes a more and more attractive idea. Even Jesus, it seems, wants to give us rest from our labors and burdens. Gathering today at God's invitation, take the time to learn of God's great love as revealed to us in Jesus Christ, God's Son. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today. And with your spirit. We'd like to welcome all those who have gathered with us this afternoon as we celebrate the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And my good friends, to prepare yourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we pause and call to mind our faults and our failings, asking God for his mercy and his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are meek and humble of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your yoke is e easy and your burden is light. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill.
Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son has raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from the slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. And the warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is number 92. I will praise your name, number 92.
letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that, that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am meek, meek and gentle of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Good friends, once again today, as we read and listen to our sacred scriptures, we see how the prophet Zechariah brings hope, joy to the people of his time. He constantly spoke God's word to the people, encouraging them to change their ways and be faithful to the Lord their God. And as if they were faithful, he would indeed reward them, and give them life forever. And so too, St. Paul, in speaking to the early Christians, tells us that we live in the spirit of God, not in the spirit of flesh. Because, as St. Paul says, the spirit of flesh 
brings death. Whereas the Spirit, living in the Spirit, we have and can enjoy that wonderful promise of eternal happiness. And I'm sure that Paul's readers and listeners realize the importance of that message because they were pretty well following the ways of their pagan neighbors. And so Paul urges them to place their trust in the Lord Jesus, in his resurrection, and in the promise of eternal life. And of course, he met with great success. Many of the early Christians heard the words. They changed their lives and became a nucleus of people who were looked upon as those early Christians. And even the pagans had to admit, see how these Christians love one another. And so indeed, as the prophet spoke, they too have embraced the word of God. They have called upon him in their need, in their distress, and the Lord God answered them. And so too in the gospel, we see Jesus giving thanks for being sent by his Father to bring the message of salvation, to encourage people to follow him, to listen to his words. And that is why he urges all the people to turn aside and realize what a great advantage they have because he himself tells us about his Father and he knows the Father as well as the Father knows him and gives him the authority and the power to bring all peoples into the family of God. And then he goes on to say, if you are my followers, give me your burdens. Let me help you carry the burdens of life and the Lord God will help all of us as we face the challenges of living as followers of Jesus. It is no easy task because prevalent society wars against it. They have basically forgotten who is the number one person in their lives. And of course, we of the faith who have followed Jesus know that it is only in and through him that we will come to the Father and eternal life. So he asks us to place on his shoulders many of the burdens that we experience in daily life. No one is exempt. Everyone carries some type of a burden throughout his life. And so we do our best day by day to take up our little crosses, walk in the footsteps of Jesus. I remember from my earlier days as a youth and the wonderful pastor of blessed memory, Monsignor Reardon. He would say, the best advice I can give you is, as you counsel and guide people in their lives, if they encounter problems, they should spend a few moments talking it over with the Lord God. 
And I've sort of followed this rule throughout my life. And in the life of a priest, many times we encounter difficult situations. Situations that are very personal, very sensitive. And so we do our best with the guidance of the Lord Jesus to help the person or persons in front of us. And in those days, the churches were open 24-7. The church was always open to stop by, say a little prayer. And of course, because of conditions today, many are locked. As soon as the service is over, people have left. Someone goes around and locks all the doors. It's sad commentary on our society. And this is necessary because many churches have been vandalized and desecrated. But anyway, he would say to the people who came to him, now here's one simple thing I want you to do. Go across the driveway, spend a few moments talking your, pro your problem, your difficulty with the Lord Jesus. And then, come back. I will wait for you. And it's amazing the wonderful success and calm we can achieve after talking things over with the Lord Jesus. We can go forward on our way to the kingdom of God. Knowing that, he walks with us. He understands us as only a father can understand. He knows each and every one of us in a very intimate and personal way. So that is what Jesus is trying to convince his listeners as he says, Come to me, all you who labor, and are burdened, I will give you rest. And a very practical example, of course, is that as we move about and move things around, it's always easier when we have someone to help us. Many times I watch construction, and I see the men struggling with 12 or a 14 foot beam. I guess if you hit the right balance, you can do it. But along comes a worker who says, here, I'll take this end, you take that end, and we will move it quickly. And so that's what Jesus does. He picks up our burdens helps us to carry them through life. And with that in mind, we never have to be afraid to call upon the Lord Jesus because he is waiting for your call. He is waiting for your message so that he truly can help you each and every day. And so, as he tells us, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, for you will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. So as he carries our crosses with us each and every day, as he is concerned for the problems, the challenges that we face, he is the one who will pick us up, set us on our feet, and give us the strength to go forth a day at a time. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
let us join together as we proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, <coughs> consubstantial with the Father. In him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. The Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, judge the living and the dead. I have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. In today's gospel, we are offered the yoke of Christ. Despite our fears, the yoke that is offered is light and easy. In gratitude, let us now approach our loving Father with our prayers and petitions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the church, may we be open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and use all our gifts to sh share the gospel with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may they model the humility of our Savior and seek peace among all nations. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may learn to be compassionate to those who have trouble bearing the burdens of life, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people, that more of them may take up the vocation of consecrated life and dedicate their lives to building up the body of Christ, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For farmers, migrant workers, and farm laborers, for fair weather, just working conditions, and fair wages, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died this week, Mary Casting, James Matthews Sr., Sister Mary Mollison, Joseph Pufal, Elizabeth Redman, and Oliver Wainer, and especially for those remembered at this Mass, Dan Zitlow. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And all our own personal petitions. We pray. God, you call your people to take up the yoke of righteousness and prepare the field for the seed of your word. Be with us in our labors. Give us encouragement along the way. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing number 681. We remember number 681. <laughs>
my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Amen. May the sacrifice dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as, without end, we acclaim. Thank you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples and saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. in a similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, his auxiliary bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And so have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, <clears throat> O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us.
forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. And look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, we say the word.
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be seated just for a moment. By way of announcements, there is another session of altar server training for all children in grades 4 to 12 who want to become servers or simply want a refresher court course. Join us at Sacred Heart Church this Friday, July 14, from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. There's more information in the bulletin. Don't forget to take a moment and download the new Holy Family app for your phone or tablet. This is a great new tool to help us all connect with our large parish community. And again, we ask you to see the bulletin and the website for more details. And this is the second Sunday of the month, and so we would ask all those who have a birthday this month to stand and receive a blessing. Any birthday people here? Well, we've got two young ladies. And so God, the Father Almighty, give all of you peace, joy, and happiness, and guide you and help you all the days of your life. And as you celebrate this birthday, your birthday into the family of God, we ask that you always walk as children of the light. So the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And a happy birthday to all. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless all of us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our closing song is number 743, Sing a New Church, number 743. Thank you. 